In this module, we are going to look at the case where the output variable is uh, drawn from a discrete space uh, or in other words, we are going to look at the classification problem. As before, the input is coming from a p dimensional space R p. The output which I am denoting by g here, I am going to assume is coming from some uh, space script g uh, which uh, is a discrete value. right? It could be uh, bice computer does not by computer. So, capital the script G could just consist of bice computer does not by computer or it could consist of like five different outcomes has has the disease a mild form of the disease a severe form of the disease does not have the disease and so on and so forth right. So, it could be a variety of uh, outcomes, but a small discrete set. So, that space is denoted by script G uh, while capital G is the random variable corresponding to the output right. And like before we are going to have a um, joint distribution on the input on the output right and the training data is going to consist of pairs x1 g1 x2 g2 all the way up to x n g n and the goal here is to learn a function f of x uh, that is going to take you from the p dimensional input space r to the uh, the discrete space script g right and uh, so the thing that we have to look at now is uh, what is an appropriate loss function in this case? So, what is an appropriate loss function in this case? Uh, since we are talking about a discrete output, right? So, I really cannot talk about squared error as a loss function, uh, even though uh, in cases where the discrete values have been encoded as numeric outputs, people do use squared error, and we will see that later, right? So, people do use squared error as an appropriate measure as long as your uh, space G has been encoded numerically, right? Uh, so, but in general, so we are going to define the loss as a k by k matrix where k is the cardinality of the discrete space script G that we are looking at. So, suppose there are 5 classes, then my uh, loss matrix is going to be a 5 by 5 matrix right. So, the, the thing here is it is going to have zeros on it have zeros on the diagonal right and so the k l th entry in the loss matrix uh, essentially is the cost that you incur of classifying the output k as L. So, the true output is k, but you output you say L right. So, that is essentially the cost of classifying k as L. So, that is denoted by the k L th entry of the loss matrix right. So, frequently the most popular loss uh, function that you use is known as the 0 1 loss function right. So, the 0 1 loss function essentially says that suppose I have uh, 3 classes right So, my loss function will look like this right. So, if I if I classify to the right class I get a penalty of 0, but if I classify to the wrong class right I get a penalty of 1 regardless of which wrong class I classify to. So, this entry says that okay the, the data point actually belongs to class 1 I have classified it as class 2 what is the penalty. So, 1 data point belongs to class 1 I classify it as class 3 what is the penalty 1 and so on so forth. So, this is called the 0 1 loss function because all the entries in the loss matrix are either 0 or 1 right. So, what we are again going to look at is the expected prediction error uh, of uh, of your f right and uh, we can do the same thing that we did earlier. So, I can start conditioning it on on, on, on x right. So, the expected prediction error and then the expectation of g over g given x which essentially becomes a 
right. So, the loss of g comma f hat given that the input is x, but if you think about it this is not a continuous distribution this is actually a discrete distribution because g can take only finitely many values. So, instead of writing it out as this expectation I can actually simplify that and write it as So, this is the loss that I will incur if k was the true class okay, and my prediction was f hat of x times the probability that k is the true class given the input x. Right. So, this is essentially I am writing out the expectation here right. So, the because it is a discrete uh, distribution I am able to write it out in a compact form right. And again I can do this minimization of this point wise like we talked about earlier. So, point wise would mean that I make a specific assumption about what is the value of x right. So, I am going to look at So, we are essentially following the same treatment that we did with the regression case except that we are using a discrete output space instead of a continuous output space right. So, this essentially says that I am going to pick the data point right that gives me the, the I am going to I'm sorry I am going to pick the prediction g that gives me the smallest expected error right. So, what suppose I have the 0 1 loss function right assume the 0 1 loss. So, what does this mean? I should essentially set my g to be that k right which has the highest probability why is that right. So, if you think about it this probability term contributes to every element in the summation right. So, what I can do is among all these probability terms I can pick one term right and set it to 0 by my choice of g right. So, suppose I choose g to be 1 then my L of 1 comma 1 will become 0 right and but my L of 1 uh, 2 comma 1 3 comma 1 so on so forth will all be 1. So, what will happen this this the probability of 2 given x probability of 3 given x all of this will actually appear in the summation right. So, if I set my g to that value of k which has the highest probability right then that will yield the best possible solution here right. So, if, uh, if you are not able to see that let us assume that there are 3 classes right I assume that there are 3 classes. So, and uh, my true distribution is says that the probability of class 1 given a data point x let us say is 0.6 probability of class 2 given x let us say is 0.2 let us say is another 0.2 okay. And of course, my loss function is going to be such that let me 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 1 right. So, this is my loss function right. So, if I guess that my class label is going to be 2 let us say. So, I said g equal to so, what is going to happen my if the class label is 1 right. So, I am going to look at the loss corresponding to 1 comma 2 which is this right. So, I will get 1 times 0 0.6 then if the class label is 2. So, I will be looking at this. So, I will get 0 times 0 0.2 plus if the class label is 3 I will look at this. So, I will get 1 times 0 0.2. So, I totally I will get a score of 0 0.8 right. 
So, as you can see depending on which value I choose, if I choose g equal to 2, then I will be zeroing out the second entry. If I choose g equal to 1, I will be zeroing out the first entry. Right? For by choosing g equal to 1, I will basically get a score of 0.4. Right? So, what I have to do in order to get the minimum here is to pick that g for which this probability is the highest. Right, so, I will set f hat of x So, you can you I hope people realize why the min here became the max here uh, uh, based on the argument that we just did. Right? So, this is essentially saying that from your training data classify it to the most most probable class right. And if I knew this if I knew this probability right. So, what will I do I can set it to the most probable output. So, this is this kind of a classifier the So, what does the Bayes optimal classifier say? Okay, look at the conditional distribution right given x look at the probability of g take the g that has the highest probability and assign it as the output. So, this is essentially what the Bayes optimal classifier would say right, but then you do not know g right. So, what you have to do is you have to estimate this probability. So, how would you estimate this probability? Do we know of any method for estimating this probability? Of course, we do we know how to do nearest neighbor right. So, what you would do in this case is that instead of taking the average over the neighbors like we did in the regression case. So, what you would do is you would estimate the probabilities in the neighborhood. So, what you would do? We will take a data point, look at the k neighbors of the data point, k nearest neighbors of the data point, find out what their class labels are, right. So, and then divide by, uh, so for each label count the number of occurrences of that label in the k neighbors and divide by k, right. So, this will give you the probability of the class label in the neighborhood, but we really do not have to do this much work, why? because we are not interested in the actual probability we all we need is the one that has the maximum probability. Since the denominator is going to be k for all the probabilities we can ignore the denominator we can just look at the numerator. So, what we can do is we can count the occurrences of the class label in the neighborhood and whichever occurs more often we can assi assign that as the class label right. about it for a minute right. So, what we are essentially doing when we take the majority is actually estimating this probability and taking the max probability right. So, take the majority label in the neighborhood and use that as your prediction. So, this essentially gives you the k nearest neighbor classifier. So, what we saw earlier was a k nearest neighbor regressor. So, all the caveats that we talked about for the k nearest neighbor uh, regressor appear uh, I mean appear uh, uh, apply to the k nearest neighbor classifier as well. So, you have to be careful about using it in very high dimensions right and you really need large values of k and large values of n before you can get stable estimates. But uh, having said all that I should say that it turns out to be a really powerful uh, classifier in practice and uh, we will come back to that uh, 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 little later as to why it is such a powerful classifier right. And uh, can we use linear regression or, uh, or the linearity assumption here? Uh, it turns out that you could use linear regression and 
almost directly for solving this problem. So, the way you do it is the following you take this data set x 1, g 1, x 2, g 2 and so on and so forth and convert it into a data set suitable for doing regression. So, how do I do that? So, I take that x 1, g 1 right. Uh, let us say that uh, I have only two classes for simplicity sake let us say I have only two classes right. So, I have g 1 and g 2 right. Uh, right so let's say 1 and 2 so i'll say i'll say that uh, uh, the 0 or 1 right so instead of having some arbitrary classes i'm going to say it's 0 or 1 so what i'm going to now do is my thing will either become something like this right So, instead of having uh, some arbitrary symbols g's right, g 1, g 2, I am going to have 0, 1, 1, 0 and so on and so forth. Now, what I can do is I can solve this as a regression problem. I can just solve this as a regression problem and uh, whatever output I get, I can treat that as an estimate of the probability of g given x if you think about it. right? So, probability of g equal to 1 given x. So, for the same value of x, if there are multiple 1's, Right. Suppose I, I the same value x occurs say 5 times in my training data, 3 of the times it was 1 and 2 of the times it was 0. Right. So, when I am trying to do a prediction, I would expect to end up at the average of this prediction, right. So, which is be like 3 by 5, and that also turns out to be the probability the with which uh, the output is 1 given an x, right. So, if I do regression with this as my training data. So, what I will be learning is the probability that g equal to 1 given x right? roughly. There are a lot of caveats in this which we will uh, look at uh, when we do uh, regression later. Uh, obviously, you cannot uh, uh, treat this directly as probabilities because the uh, regression curve can become negative. right? So, you cannot really treat it as probabilities, uh, but uh, it just to have it is a useful intuition to have and uh, so the the output that you learn here, so your f, f hat of x right in this case if it is greater than or equal to 0 0.5 then you say the class is 1, if it is less than 0 0.5 you say the class is 0 right. So, you could use a, a linear regression to solve this as well right. So, what we have done in this uh, couple of modules is to look at uh, 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 um, a unifying uh, formulation for uh, classification and regression problems, so supervised learning problems and uh, looked at a couple of different classifiers uh, that arise out of making certain assumptions about uh, classifiers and regressors that arise out of making uh, certain assumptions about the, uh, the functions that we are trying to learn. Right? Uh, in the subsequent classes, we will uh, start looking at uh, uh, each of these in uh, more detail. So, starting off with uh, linear regression. Uh, we will look at this um, uh, uh, different classifiers in greater detail. So, thank you.